Who are the models of faith in your life? I think many of us, when we think of the faithful people in our lives, would think of maybe, you know, parents or grandparents or maybe a confirmation sponsor, somebody who is truly a faithful person who really lives out the call to the gospel message and truly believes what they say. And of course, maybe, maybe many of us would point to the saints and the great works that they've been able to do on earth. But I always like to look at um, the, the places who are people who are faithful that we wouldn't expect to be faithful. Maybe like somebody who's struggling with cancer, but yet still has that close relationship with Christ, and they still remain true to the faith. Or maybe like a young couple that's getting married because they see Christ as the center of their lives, and they want to build each other up in Christ, and they exude that faith, even though they're relatively young for their age. I, all, these, all we have to do is open our eyes, and we can see faithfulness in different places. And in today's gospel passage, this is what Jesus finds. He finds faith in an unexpected place. Now, at this time, when we talk about the, the Jewish people thought that only the Messiah was to only come for the Jewish people and for nobody else. So anybody outside of the nation of Israel was not going to be saved by the Messiah. So here we have the Canaanite woman coming to Jesus to begging for, showing faith and begging for him to heal her daughter who is tormented by a demon. And we know that the Canaanites are really like the riffraff of the Old Testament scripture. Like if you read the book of Deuteronomy, there's, they have nothing good to say about the Canaanites. But yet here is this riffraff coming to Jesus, asking for his mercy, asking for him to heal the daughter. And he says, and she says, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. She even proclaims that he's the Messiah because she uses the term son of David. And what does Jesus do? He ignores her. Well, Jesus is playing hard to get in this passage because he's trying to prove a point. So he just, he just ignores her, and then she, he says, or the disciples say, send her away. She keeps calling after us. Why is this Canaanite woman calling after us? And then Jesus says, I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But of course, this is why the woman responds. She does this homage. She says, it is, and, he, and she asks for the demon to be healed. And then there's this great line, too, about how it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And she says, please, Lord, even the dogs eat the scrap that fall from the table of their masters. And this is why Jesus heals the woman's daughter out of her gift of faith. And he says, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. So we see in today's gospel passage, there's this mindset that anybody outside of the nation of Israel should not have faith. But yet here is this Canaanite woman who shows her faith in Christ and who begs to receive that little gift of faith from Jesus to ask for that intercession. And then she's able to show even more faith than many of Jesus' followers had at the time. And this is kind of a theme that flows through today's readings, where we see in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, he's saying that the Lord's going to call all nations to himself, that they're all going to be gathered. It's not a Messiah for one people, but it's a Messiah for all people. And this is where in today's second passage from the letter of St. Paul, we see that St. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. He's going out to all the world to cultivate that gift of faith, to bring all people to Christ. So the question becomes, we, we see how, when you look at the Canaanite woman in today's gospel passage, we see that strength of her faith. We see how zealous she is to talk to the Lord, and she knows that the Lord can heal her daughter. But that's, that the question begs become, where are we in our faith journey? Are we as faithful as that Canaanite woman, or has our faith grown lukewarm? And this is where we always need to be more faithful in our lives. We always need to become closer to God and to grow closer to Him. But of course, faith is a gift from God. So when we talk about faith, we're talking about that being able to have our hearts open to divine truth as a gift of the Holy Spirit. And we always need to examine where is the faith in our lives. Are we still trying to tell God what to do with our lives, or are we open to His divine truth? Are we still trying to control every single moment of our lives, or are we opening our hearts to God's divine will? Are we letting our own sinful pride get in the way, or are we able to humble ourselves to be obedient to, to Christ and to his word? And this is where we always need to grow in that gift of faith. We always need to grow in that. And we do this by the power of prayer, first and foremost, by building that relationship with God, but also by trusting in God's divine will. As in the Our Father, you know, the third petition is, Thy will be done. How often do we say that, you know, every time we come to Mass, every time we pray the Rosary? How often do we say that but actually think about what those words mean and then open our hearts to actually let that happen? 
And this is the gift of faith that we have to open our hearts to. We have to say, yes, Lord, thy divine will be done. Jesus, I trust in your divine will. But that's a very difficult thing to do. And this is where we always need to grow in that strength, grow in that prayer, grow in that relationship with Christ so that we can open up our hearts to trust in God's divine will and show the faith like the Canaanite woman in today's gospel passage. So today we have a challenge to reflect on where is my faith journey right now? Am I, have I grown lukewarm in the faith? Do I just sort of go through the motions and just show up and do the things that I'm called to? Or am I on fire with the Holy Spirit? Have I opened my heart up to God where even in the midst of horrible persecution, I can still proclaim Jesus and be proud to be called Catholic? This is a challenge for all of us that we have to live in today's society, and we always need to be mindful of where we are. And may we always have the courage to look up to those role models who we see in, those, in, those, in our daily lives to ask for the courage to grow in our faith, to grow in that relationship with the Lord, to open ourselves up to his divine will so that we can always be faithful and grow closer to Christ, which will give us strength to carry out the gospel message into the world today.